so this is my um, second attempt. This might only be uh, for 10 minutes or so, but here today on Saturday, 20th of May, and uh, I'm actually outside uh, Holminster, England's largest parish church. Um, there's a square here surrounded by pubs, so lots and lots of people drinking in the streets. It's loud music, so whether it's a good place or a bad place to preach the gospel, it's never a bad place to preach the gospel, is it? And I see that the same police officers who heard me before are also watching me from across the road. But this is a kind of um, this is kind of a wind down. So, by God's grace, if I can, I will preach the word of God here also. Um, Father, I pray that this short um, episode, this short effort, would be nevertheless blessed and owned of you. I pray that there would be somebody who you have sent to hear this, your word. Um, it might be even from the church, Lord, realizing that to the bus church's business is to preach the gospel. And um, I pray, Father, therefore, that you would have um, mercy upon me and help me again to preach your word. And this I ask and pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So good afternoon. It's my privilege to be here and I preach this gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the Christian message. This is the message that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. And the Bible, or the Paul the Apostle, who was the one who said that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, Paul the Apostle, he uh, said, of whom I am chief. So if Jesus Christ came into the world to save the chief of sinners, the worst of sinners, the vilest of sinners, the most corrupt of sinners, the most undeserving of sinners, <coughs> the greatest of sinners, then the Lord Jesus Christ can save you or he can save me. Jesus Christ is the saviour of the world. The Lord Jesus Christ is the one who will take away your sin. The Lord Jesus is the one who will give you life, everlasting life. Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary, and he was raised from the dead by the power of Almighty God. And the Lord Jesus Christ is alive today. And that same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is at work in the heart of everyone who truly believes on him. Now, we read here in John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. There's a promise that comes from God. A promise that says that if you believe in Jesus, you won't perish, but you will have everlasting life. I wonder how many people here today are afraid of death. Most of us are afraid of death. Most of us love life and we will cling on to it, whatever happens. But you see, Jesus says that if we believe on him, we have everlasting life. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Jesus will give you life. He will give you everlasting life. If you believe on him, and the Lord Jesus Christ came into the world to deliver sinners, to deliver us from our sins, to save us, to give us a salvation that comes from Almighty God. Because without Jesus Christ, we cannot escape the fires of hell. If you know Jesus Christ, then you know the salvation of God and you have everlasting life. But if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you must stand before the judgment throne of God and on that day of judgment, every single sin will work against you. We would deserve to go to hell for eternity for a single sin, for a single lie, for a single swear word, for a single blasphemy. What blasphemous, evil and wicked days we live in. Days when people think nothing of taking God's name in vain. People, days when people take the things that God calls holy and they abuse God in their language and in the way that they speak. Days in which they used the name of Jesus Christ as a common swear word. When the Bible tells us that God has set the name of Jesus Christ above every name, that every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. 
One day you will bow the knee to Jesus Christ. If you won't bow the knee to him in this world, you will bow the knee to Jesus Christ in the next. He is not only the saviour of the world now and the saviour of all those who put their trust in him now, but the Lord Jesus Christ is that coming judge on the throne of heaven. When he came in Bethlehem, he was born in a stable, he was born in obscurity, he was a tiny baby, helpless. But when the Lord Jesus returns on the clouds of heaven, which will be very soon, he will return in all the glory and majesty and power that belongs to Almighty God. Because all of the power and glory that belongs to God belongs to Jesus Christ. Because he is God. Because he is the second person of the Holy Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So Jesus will either be your saviour forever from all your sins, forever to everlasting life, or he will be your judge for everlasting torment in hell fire. And the Lord Jesus warned us about that. And his word says, Whoever's name was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, it's interesting, isn't it, that the gospel, this gospel of Jesus Christ, this is what Christianity is, according to the Lord Jesus Christ himself. It's interesting that this gospel is preached outdoors, in the open air, out here. Sadly, if you go into these buildings, you very seldom hear this gospel being preached anymore. Because our pulpits have become places of religiosity, but not places of truth. The Bible says, to the word and to the testimony. If they do not preach according to this book, according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And the Bible teaches us that salvation is by faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone. And I hope you know Jesus Christ, and I hope you found Jesus Christ, because I can tell you that the Church of England, in its archbishops, has ceased to teach this gospel. Instead of lifting up the name of Jesus, instead of teaching what the Bible calls justification by faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone, we now have archbishops clamouring for gender-neutral gods, which don't exist and the blessing of same-sex relationships, which is an abomination to Almighty God. That's quite clear. So they are blind leaders of the blind. We must get back to the law and to the testimony. We must go back to the source. We must return to Jesus Christ himself. For the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord, I hope you know Jesus Christ. I hope you really know him in your heart. Have you repented of your sin? Have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? Because there is mercy in Jesus Christ. Because there is forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Because there is cleansing from sin in the Lord Jesus Christ. But outside of Jesus Christ, there is no mercy. And outside of Jesus Christ, our sins remain upon us. And without Jesus Christ, we can never be delivered from the wrath to come. He will save you from your sin, my friend. He will give you life. He will transform you from within. He will bring you home to glory. He will give you everlasting life. But if you don't know Jesus Christ, then you cannot have that life. If you don't know Jesus Christ, your sins remain upon you. God knows your sins. I don't know anything about anybody here today. I don't know anything about anybody that is except about myself. And I know that I'm a sinner. And I know that I deserve the wrath of God. And I know that I deserve to be cast into hell. But I also know that my sins are forgiven. And I also know that somebody paid the penalty for my sins. That was Jesus Christ. And I also know whom I believed. And I know that just as Jesus Christ was resurrected bodily from the dead by the power of Almighty God, I also know that I am saved from my sins. If I died today, if I were to drop dead right now, this probably won't happen, but it could happen. It could happen to any of us. But if I were to drop dead right now, it is well with my soul. I have peace with God. I have salvation. I have everlasting life. Because Jesus Christ is my surety, my guarantee. Because he died on the cross for my sins. Because my sins were placed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus bore the punishment for my sins. 
and I am forgiven and I have life and I am saved and I found mercy and I know my Saviour, I know the Lord Jesus and I love him because he died for me and gave himself for me. In fact the Bible says of Christians, we love him because he first loved us. And that's the remarkable thing about this, that the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus who came to seek and to save that which was lost, the Lord Jesus loved us first. The Lord Jesus first came into the world to seek and to save that which was lost. The Lord Jesus didn't die for the righteous or the just or the deserving. The Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for listening sir, the Lord Jesus Christ he came for the unworthy and the undeserving. He came for rebels. The Lord Jesus came into the world for his enemies, to die for his enemies that they might become his friends. And the Lord Jesus accomplished salvation when he was crucified, when he was nailed to that cross, when he was lifted up between the heavens and the earth, when the Lord Jesus Christ was nailed to that cross. The Bible says, Cursed is everybody that is hung upon a tree. And Jesus was hung upon a tree. He was hung upon the cross. And he who was sinless and perfect and pure and lovely and righteous and holy, he who was the Son of God who became flesh and dwelt among us, was hung upon a tree to show us that he had borne the curse of sin, that he had paid the penalty for sin, that he had died in the place of sinners, that his blood was shed and his body was broken so that he could be the saviour of the world, the saviour of all those who put their trust in him. Thank you for listening, sir. Thank you. The Lord Jesus Christ, my friends, will be your saviour. The promise in the scriptures is that whosoever will may come and drink freely of the waters of life. And we see this chap here and he's scooting around and he's touching the water. But there is a living water. There is a water that comes from God. Jesus said, whoever lives and believes in me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. The Bible says, come without money and without price. Salvation is God's free gift. We cannot purchase it. We could not purchase it. It is not for sale. And if it was for sale, we could not afford it. It doesn't matter if we were Bill Gates or Elon Musk or whoever we were, or uh, Earl de Rothschild or whoever we were. It wouldn't matter. Jesus said, what would it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his soul? But, but... We may come without money and without price. We may come and drink freely of the waters of salvation when we come to Jesus Christ. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water, Jesus said. And we must be born again, the Bible says. We must be born again by the Holy Spirit of God. Because unless we are born of the water and of the Spirit, Jesus says to uh, Nicodemus, one of the rulers of the Jews in his day, we read about that here in John's Gospel, chapter 3, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, we should ask that of our priests. No, we shouldn't have priests, actually. There is no ongoing priesthood in the Bible. Jesus did away with the priesthood. Jesus was that great high priest who made one sacrifice once for all for sinners when he died upon the cross. And there is no other sacrifice for sin. And there is no further need for a sacrifice for sin. And there is no one else that could pay the price for sin. But Jesus Christ has done it all. But we should be asking of those who are in our pulpits, we should be asking of those who call themselves bishops and shepherds of the flock, we should be asking of those who are ministers whether they are born again of God's Holy Spirit, whether they understand what that means, whether God has taken hold of them, transformed them by his power, delivered them from their sins, made them new creatures in Jesus Christ. Christianity, Christianity, according to this book, which is the Word of God, the Bible, Christianity is about Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God. Woe to those archbishops that talk about a general neutral God. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. 
when he was born in Bethlehem, Jesus didn't have a gender assigned at birth. Jesus is, Jesus was the Son of God. What folly, what madness. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Professing them to be leaders of God's people. Professing themselves to be shepherds, they became blind leaders of the blind. And they fell into a ditch, and all those who followed them fell into the same ditch. It's a deep ditch. It's an unpleasant ditch. It's a ditch of hell, fire, and torment. We need to return to the Bible. We need to return to the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to return to the gospel of God. We need to turn to the doctrine, that great doctrine of the Reformation, which Martin Luther rediscovered, which John Calvin rediscovered, which John Knox rediscovered, which Hugh Latimer and others in England rediscovered, which William Tyndale rediscovered, that doctrine of justification by faith alone. This is the great doctrine of the Bible, that we are saved by faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone. That works cannot save us, that religion cannot save us. Religious ceremonies can't save us. Religious icons can't help us, statues can't help us, and so on and so forth. A man or a woman or a child is saved from their sins, by faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone, when they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, God will give you a new heart. God will give you a new heart. He will change you from within. You must be born again. The Holy Spirit must come upon you. He must come into your heart. He must come into your life. He must make you a new creature in Christ Jesus. That's why it says when a person truly becomes a Christian, it's not a matter of religious observance, but when a person truly becomes a Christian, it says old things have passed away. All things have become new. Now that happened to me when I was 18 years old. I'm a lot older than that now, but it's never left me. The Lord Jesus is my saviour. He came into my heart. The Lord Jesus came into my life. The Lord Jesus transformed me and saved me from within. Now the Bible says, what is your life? What is your life? It's but a vapour. You used to see teenagers smoking to show their bravado. Now everywhere you go in Hull City Centre you see teenagers vaping. And you see they've got this plastic tube in their mouths. And you see this vapour comes up and it very rapidly just disappears. It goes away. Vaping. Well the Bible says your life is but a vapour. Your life is like that vape. It appears and it goes. If we live to be 100 years old, our life is but a vapour. If we live to be 10 or 1, our life is but a vapour. Our lives are very, very short, and the days of the years of our lives, they flee by, they fly by. But eternity is a terribly long time. It's an unending time. An eternity in hell or an eternity in heaven. That's the choice set before us. Your life is but a vapour. It may go today. Any one of us or all of us. Fellow Vladimir Putin has a red button. He could push it and all of us would be gone. Vladimir Putin, whom we're provoking by sending F-16 jets to the Ukraine. Vladimir Putin, who we are, the British, we are promo provoking him by sending long-range missiles to the Ukraine. And I'm not supporting Vladimir Putin, I would never do that, but my friends, we are in a situation where we are under military threat of annihilation and we are powerless and helpless. To say your life is but a vapour, what about those who were vaporised in nuclear explosions? Could happen to us. And it may not happen to us, but we don't know. We are under the threat of nuclear war. Why are we not concerned for our souls? Why are we not preparing for eternity? Why are we not seeking God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind and with all our strength, seeking that salvation that comes from God? Because that's what we need. We need to know Jesus Christ. And we need to know that we know Jesus Christ. Too many people say they know Jesus who don't know him. Do you know Jesus Christ? Have you found Jesus Christ? He is a person. He is alive. He is near at hand to those who call on him. He is altogether lovely. He is righteous. He is holy. He is the deliverer of those who put their trust in him. 
and the Lord Jesus Christ will have mercy on you and he will deliver you from your sin, all of it. Sexual immorality, drunkenness, lying, swearing, idolatry, godlessness, unholiness, unbelief, impurity, licentiousness, wickedness of every kind, darkness. The Lord Jesus came into the world to seek and to save sinners. The Lord Jesus died in the place of sinners so that those who know him can say this, my sin is forgiven, my sin is washed away. Though I am the very chief of sinners, though I am the worst of sinners, and though God knows all of my sin and God knows everything about me, yet Jesus Christ has paid the penalty for my sins. And his blood will take away my sin. We talk about being washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. What we mean is by that is we believe in his death. We believe in what he's done. He made a sacrifice. The Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Without the shedding of blood, we cannot know the salvation of God. Without the shedding of blood, we cannot find the salvation of God. Without the shedding of blood, there is no deliverance of sin. But Jesus' blood was shed on the cross of Calvary. He was nailed to the cross. He was raised up between the heavens and the earth. His blood flowed down. His body was broken. He died in the place of sinners. He who was pure, he who was lovely, he who was righteous, he who was holy, he who never sinned died in the place of the sinners and the unjust and the ungodly, such as you or I. And the Lord Jesus laid down his life and he gave himself for us. And the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus is that mighty deliverer from sin. Now I ask you, none of the religions of the world can do that for you, they can't. None of them have the power of an everlasting life. None of them can deliver us from our sin. None of, us, none of them can give us a clear conscience. It's Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that washes away our sins. It's the death of Jesus Christ and trusting in his death, trusting in his work upon the cross. And it's, it's his resurrection. It's the empty tomb. It's the power of an endless life that guarantees that Jesus Christ is who he says he is, that he is the saviour, that he is the deliverer, and that he will take away our sins if we, if we trust in him. So we must turn from our sins and we must repent of our sins. That means we must confess our sins, we must acknowledge our sins, and we must look to God alone for the forgiveness of our sins. And Jesus Christ will have mercy on us, and he will deliver us from the wrath to come. Trust in the Lord. Seek him. Seek him until you find him. Seek the mercy that comes from God. Seek the salvation that comes from God alone, and you will find everlasting life. Without Jesus, you can't be saved. Your sins remain upon you. God is a God who will judge the sinner and will cast the sinner into hell. But in Jesus Christ we find mercy and love and salvation. Now we read these words again in John's Gospel, chapter 3, and verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall have life, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Father, thank you for that uh, opportunity to preach your word and the... And the great joy of preaching Jesus Christ to sinners, Lord, and yet so few listening. Lord, I pray that your word would come with power into the hearts of those who heard, and I pray that you would bring conviction, and oh Lord, I pray that you bring your salvation, and that your salvation would be visited upon the people of Hull, and have mercy upon me, and bless these conversations now if they take place. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.